Welcome back. We're going to be going through the second Fusion 360 tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a watering can, how to use different tools that you'll be using to make this watering can. This watering can uh, over here, there's a variety. You guys are going to need a variety of different techniques to use to make it. And though, I, as I mentioned in the last video, you don't have to 3D print this, but you do need to design it for homework and link it in your website. Now, we're going to go through what needs to be in your watering can and what you can actually play around with. In terms of the general shape of the watering can, we accept a general shape. This arm must be coming off at some sort of angle from this container. There must be a fillet around here, which I discussed in the previous video. If you don't remember it, go back and watch the previous video. There must be a loft, which is essentially a way to connect two different profiles of different sizes, as we can see right here. And then finally, up here, this must be in, uh, this must be fully defined. Here I use circular pattern. You don't have to. You can be creative. Uh, in terms of oh, and finally, the whole thing must be shelled out, including the arm. If, if in theory it was printed, it should work as a watering can. Now, in terms of else than that, you guys are free to be creative. Uh, you can add a text to it if you want. You can add an arm to it if you want. You could change the shape around, have fun with it. Feel free to be creative and make a watering can of your choice. And here's where I'm going to quickly plug in and tell you guys that Fusion 360 is the most used hobbyist software. There are resources for everything. If you're curious on trying to do something or make something, go online, Google search Fusion 360 this, and it will come up some sort of tutorial helping you. Me personally, in the past, I've gone on. I wanted, was curious on, can I make a full boat in Fusion 360? I looked it up. Turns out someone made a 15 video a playlist on YouTube on making a boat in Fusion 360. There's plenty of cosplay stuff, soar, plenty of fun uh, gear stuff, knickknacks, gadgets, and so forth. So really, you can have fun. Go online. Uh, after really this, uh, after this and last videos combined, you guys are good to go in uh, using online resources and just getting started from there. The last big thing that you guys are really missing, and it is the last and major constraint for this homework, is that every sketch you guys make must be fully defined. I discussed this in the last video slightly. I will discuss it more here. But as you can see, when I hover over sketches, every sketch is 100% defined. That means if I were to go and change around references on one sketch to another sketch, I can do so without disrupting everything. I can, since if I were to change something, it shouldn't change anything else since everything else was fully defined in some capacity. Or if I do change it and they reference each other, they will still keep referencing each other and change accordingly, which can be incredibly helpful in trying to scale your image smaller and bigger or change different dimensions. So last heads up, quick recap, angle off this, fill it, loft command, Fully defined sketches throughout and shell the middle. Very, uh, very much so. Remember to do so. It is part of your grade this time. You will be graded based off of having these requirements. If you do not have these requirements, it will hit your grade. If you are having difficulty, once again, online resources are amazing and we are here at the Makerspace every day from 3 to 8, sometimes earlier and later, come by, ask an email, sending for help. We are glad and more than willing to help you guys out and make sure that you guys can do this quickly and efficiently. If you're getting really stuck and killing yourself over doing it, feel free to come in, ask for help, and we'd love to help you guys out. Now, let's go through these particular techniques. At this point in the video, I want to give a shout out, uh, shout out to John, Dalton, Ibrahim, and Michelle, who have confirmed that uh, who have went through, looked at the watering can, and told me, I know how to do all of this except for X, Y, and Z. And then I explained to them different tools, and they told me what tools they said they needed in order for you guys to complete this watering can. And based off of these tools, I have de uh, designed the, uh, the rest of this video. Uh, so if there is a, if you feel that you're missing a tool to do this, I would tell you to bring up your complaints with either, once again, Dalton, John, Ibrahim, or Michelle, 
for confirming that these are the only tools and techniques that you need to make this watering can. One last time for those of you that missed it, Dalton, John, Michelle, and Ibrahim. They can be found here very often in the makerspace working. So if there is something missing, feel free to blame them for not paying enough attention when there was a critical time needed of them. Uh, that being said, I do believe that these are all the techniques you need. But once again, final time, Dalton, John, Abraham, and Michelle are the ones to blame if there is a technique that you feel is missing from this in order to achieve this project. So let's go through and do this. Starting off, we're going to click to open our origin. We're going to go ahead. We're going to make a center circle. Click right here. Set it. We're going to set it to 50 millimeters. We're going to go ahead. We're going to extrude it up. We're going to extrude it to 20 millimeters. And we are good to go. Next up, we're going to make a sketch on top of this, as we've done it previously. There we go. Create sketch. I'm going to go ahead, make another circle right in the middle, 20 millimeters. And now let's go back to our extrude command and let's talk about it a bit. I told you guys last time to blatantly extrude. I didn't really go into much depth, so I'm going to talk a bit more about it here. So the operation is discussing how are we extruding it. Either we could create a new body or a new component. The difference between a new body and a new component is more complex than I'm going to cover in this video. However, if you're interested, there's a wonderful video on YouTube by Product Design Online along with other Fusion 360 videos that can help you guys out to, uh, to differentiate this. You guys can also look up great resources online helping you explain the difference. However, in terms of for now and possibly for this entire class, there won't be really a need to differentiate these. Next up, there is the join, which is simply saying, I want this to all be one massive body that has this thing coming out of it. Follow up, if I go in the other direction, now we're in the cut direction. I can extend this down as far as I want. And it'll essentially saying I want to cut this, just like you guys saw in the Tinkercad video where you put the cut thing in to cut out a part. Same thing right here. Uh, Tinkercad video, I mean your 3D printer to training, which if you have not done yet, please contact Madison immediately to get this scheduled. It's very important you guys have your 3D printer training done. So you can go ahead right here, cut it out. And we could set it to be more, but this might disrupt other stuff if we had something below it. We could set up just right, but that can be sometimes annoying. So there's a tool we can use. We could set the extent to go to an object. And here, I'm going to select the bottom plane. It will extend down to here, effectively cutting it to that far. Click on OK. And now we made the donut that we're interested in. The last one to talk about quickly is the intersect command. What the intersect command is says only keep the intersection of the two uh, parts. So intersect, that's the only part intersected. Now this is the only part that would end up staying. Simple. I'm going to undo this with command Z simply, control Z for window users. And we're going to stick to this donut. <laughs> All right, here we can go back to our sketches. Everything is fully defined. If you start moving on to a new sketch and you had a previous sketch that wasn't defined, go back. Fix your sketches, make sure they're fully defined before moving on to do more layers. It is very important. This is gonna let you be able to reference them in different ways. <clears throat> so, moving on from here, I'm gonna go on, make a new sketch right here, create sketch. I'm going to sort of zoom in here, use the line command, going from the center, and I want it to intersect right here. We can see it's parallel. It is coincident with the circle, and it, it also goes through the well, it starts at the origin. This cannot be moved. This is fully defined. I cannot change it in any way without breaking one of my constraints. Next up, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to select myself a center diameter circle. I'm going to go and set this to be, we're going to set 10 millimeters. I can move this freely. It is not constrained. As you see here, it is not locked. I can move it however I please. Uh, I cannot change its size though because it is set to 10 millimeters. Well, I want actually the center to be coincident with this line. Okay, still not defined, but now I can't move it left and right. 
Also, coincident is interesting when you look here. It just needs to be, it, this would assume this line goes on forever, even though it doesn't actually. So I can bring it up and down. It is still technically coincident with the line, despite the fact it's not directly on it. But this still is not fully defined. <coughs> the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to fully define it. I'm going to click tangent, and I'm going to say I want this circle tangential with that circle. This is fully defined. You can see it right here. I cannot move this circle without ruining, uh, without uh, going against one of the previously const set constraints I have. I'm going to go ahead. I didn't do it before. Set this line to construction mode. You can do so here or keyboard shortcut X. And there we go. Now, imagine I wanted to build something on top of this donut. I can't just build in midair. Everything has been referenced from something. Our very first sketch was set to be on this plane from that origin point. Everything is referenced. Nothing is simply random. The only thing that we set randomly at the start is we said that in this giant empty white plane, that dot right there was zero, zero. And we decided that this is the Z axis, that's the X, and this is the Y axis. That was the only thing set that was arbitrary. There is no reason for this dot to have been set here, then it could have been set here. We could have shifted everything accordingly. It would have all been in the same, it would have all been the same. However, everything else was referenced according, starting with that single center origin dot. And this is incredibly important to realize. Everything is defined, everything is defined in, uh, from another thing. And everything in this case is defined from that origin point. And that origin point is the only thing that was set arbitrarily. So when we transfer this to another software, really what we need to get, do is send over all the constraints we have and the origin point. So we need to send a relation to the origin point. When we're working with this, we need to remember what is related to what and what is defined by what. And this lets us be able to change stuff around uh, in one place and having it scale on our entire model accordingly. This is why it's incredibly important to have everything defined. If something is not defined, that means it's not actually fully referenced by something. That means there are parts of it that are lenient and in the air on, I don't know how to define this. Uh, I don't know how to define this. You sent me no actual precedent or definition for where this should be. This can be relative to anywhere else. When Fusion will export as SDL, this isn't relevant. Uh, this doesn't matter though, but when you start changing uh, your model around, this could seriously start warping uh, stuff if you would try to mess with dimensions or set other stuff and maybe change past things. Very important to have everything defined. Remember for the homework, everything must be defined. It is part of your grade on this one. So we're going to want to make some sort of way to reference and work on some sort of plane on top. We're going to go to construct and we're going to construct an offset plane. We're going to do this by simply going down here, selecting this plane, and we're going to be offsetting it upwards. I could have selected a face or whatever I wanted to. I'm going to set this to 30. Now this is 30 millimeters in the air. I'm going to go ahead, click here. I'm going to create a sketch. And I'm going to make a circle. The circle, I want it to be defined by that point right there. However, I actually can't click on that point. That point doesn't seem visible to me. That's a problem because I want to use that point. When I try making a circle, it won't let me. And the reason is, this is a different plane than that plane. There is no actual direct relation between this plane I'm working on and this plane below me. So we're going to use something called the project tool. Project tool with P will let you select a point or line or whatever you please and project it onto the current plane you're working on. Right here, you can see this dot has been projected from down here up here. This is going to be important in your water canister when you're trying to work with stuff at an angle. You won't be able to reference stuff easily. You're going to have to use the project tool to say, I want to reference this line. I want to reference this circle to then make my other stuff uh, proportional too. That way, everything can be still referenced. All right. Else than that, we're going to go back, we're going to make our center circle, and we're going to set this to be six millimeters. 
and we're going to click on finish sketch. So now to show you very quickly, if I go back down here, I get rid of, decide I don't want this to be coincident. I actually want this move down. I want dimension tool, move this, and I'm going to want this 16 millimeters. Remember, what we're doing here is just to show off, uh, show uh, techniques and stuff. You don't have to exactly do it yourself. But now that I did that, this circle up here moved relative. Since what it was defined by is each center is aligned with the center of this circle. This circle moved, this circle moved as a result. And this is where you really start seeing the power of parametric modeling. By the fact that everything was fully defined, I can move stuff around in, in such a way that everything will still stay relative to each other based off of how I defined it. Okay, now we're gonna discuss finally the loft command. The loft command will connect two planes to one another and make some sort of connection between them. We're gonna go to shortcut, we're gonna write on loft, and we're gonna select the blue loft one. We're gonna select this profile down here and this profile here, and it's gonna connect them in this type of way. Uh, there is much more fancy stuff in loft con uh, concerning guide rails, center lines, um, but we're not gonna discuss it too much. Uh, the only thing that's important is you want uh, the matter, uh, the, the direction you loft in is important. Loft in the order that it's supposed to go. It is supposed to go from this profile to this profile. <clears throat> if you go in different directions, it can mess stuff up and you can start getting results you weren't intending. Uh, the only thing that we're going to look at very quickly is here. We can, instead of it being a nice connection, we could say, I, hey, I want this to go in a specific direction. And then I can adjust what's called the takeoff weight and I can make something like this accordingly editing my shape. Feel free to do this when you guys are making your planter. I'm going to leave mine connected, but play around here a bit, have fun, set your direction from one or the other, and there you go. And that's the basics of Loft Command. It's incredibly powerful. This is going to let you connect uh, sketches in different planes to one another, as we have right here, and you guys are going to need this for your watering can. The final thing to discuss in this video is going to be a bit more of these planes. More specifically, which what they do. You can hover over them, each one, to essentially be able to read what they are. They are pretty self-explanatory. A tangent plane will create a construction plane that is tangent to a cylindrical or conical face, you know, such as right here. A... I didn't read this randomly. You will probably be needing this for your water can. And then the other ones that are uh, that are ones you could look at are plane tangent to a face at a point. This will make it tangent to a face, but you also need to select a particular point to do so. So we don't actually have one, but we're gonna go ahead, go right here, create a sketch. I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna go on, I'm gonna create a point, come on, I want a point, and I want that point to be right here. I want there to be a line connecting that point here, and I want that line to be horizontal. This is fully defined. This will be a construction line. Once again, everything fully defined. That exists. I want to construct a, a tangent plane to face at a point. I'm gonna select the face, I'm gonna select the point, and I'll make a tangent plane going through that point on this face. All right, that is important. The last one that I'm going to be showing you guys about is going to be finally plane at an angle. Mind you, at an angle. Very important for your water canister. So what this asks us to do is get some sort of line. Uh, and then we can make, uh, we can move this around to be at some sort of appropriate angle to that line. Well, to show you guys quickly what you can do here, we're gonna do a plane tangent to a face at a point. Okay. Next up on this new plane, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna create a sketch. I'm gonna use project to project that point to make sure I can reference it. And now I'm just going to make myself, I wanna make a line that goes down like this. And we're gonna have it go down this far. This isn't defined, once again, 
This can go as high or low as I want. I can use project, make that appear. I can now make it connect to this. I can now make a, another line at the midpoint of this line and have it go like this. I can, uh, and then for this line, I'm going to simply select and make this 15. And I'm gonna set this to construction. I'm gonna to go to finish sketch. Here, I could go to construct, plane at an angle, select this line. Now I can select this to be a plane at an angle. I said 180 degrees, but that isn't particularly useful. But that should give you an idea of setting a plane at an angle. Uh, you guys are going to need to do a bit more than this. Uh, what you guys will be needing to do, I'll guide through and through it a bit more with you guys, is we're going to return to this sketch. You can go ahead, delete that line. We're going to make a center circle at the midpoint here. <coughs> we're going to set this to 20. We're going to finish sketch. I'm going to go ahead and extrude this out 10. Um, Actually, we're going to do that differently. We're going to delete this. We're going to reference this. We're going to construct an offset plane from here at 10, 10 millimeters forward. I'm going to go ahead and pick these two, and I'm going to, to object, cut it. So it cuts through. Then I'm going to go on this plane. We're going to create a new sketch. Here, I'm going to make a line. Reference by this. We're going to set it to 10. We're going to have it be perfectly like this. Go ahead and make it horizontal or vertical. Turn it into a construction line. Finish sketch. Construct. Plane at an angle. Go ahead, select this line. Set it to seven degrees. Go ahead back here, create a new sketch. Now make a new circle. We need to reference it by something. So I'm going to go ahead and project that point right there. There we go. Make it 20. We can go ahead and I'm going to extrude it very quickly forward a bit for you guys. What do you look at that? Now, this isn't the entire planter, but uh, for those of you that went that this went a bit fast, go back, rewatch it slowly. But this is a key part of your planter if you don't see it yet. All right. Um, thank you guys for watching the video. Good luck on making planter. Remember, if you want to come in, feel free to do so. I gave a lot of information in this video. I actually gave more information that I was originally intending to give away on how to make the on how to make the watering can. Uh, for example, this part here. This is a very key bit of information. If it was confusing. Watch it slowly, take your time. You only, And this is the exact steps you need to do. Most of what you need to do has been uh, shown to you already. There should be nothing that you really need to look up, nothing too much more complex to do. And you have all the information you need. Good luck to you, all of you guys.